Good morning class. Today is my topic of presentation is acute respiratory distress syndrome that is ARDS. <clears throat> so basically it is a disease of uh, respiratory system due to which our respiratory system get depressed or distressed due to which gases exchange does not happen and uh, because of this there will be a low oxygen supply or uh, there will be no gases exchange. So introduction to the respiratory system you know that this one is the, our bronchial muscle, <coughs> this one is alveoli and this one is our bronchioles all right these are the part of lung all right these are the bronchi nasal cavity oral cavity larynx trachea all right <coughs> introduction to the basic respiratory system you know that in normally what will happen the carbon dioxide from our blood stream goes into the alveolus and the uh, alveolus what it does uh, what it's what it do that uh, the oxygen present here it comes into the blood flow and here the from the blood vessel and to the body cell it comes and goes out this is the normal mechanism of the respiratory system so what do you mean by ARDS so actually it is life-threatening condition of a lung disease that prevents enough oxygen from getting into the blood means uh, what will happen here here the this process does not happen and what will happen in ARDS this oxygen and this carbon dioxide will not exchange with each other so there will be no uh, oxygen supply to the body cells all right <clears throat> acute respiratory distress syndrome was first described in 1967 by uh, Ashbog and colleagues uh, Ashbog and colleagues and uh, they had referred to various terms like mean they had given different different terms, like stiff lung shock lung wet lung post traumatic lung acute respiratory distress syndrome adult hyaline membrane and disease capillary leak syndrome and congestive atelectasis all right <clears throat> so what will be the definition for this that it is actually respiratory failure in which the alveolar capillary membrane the, ca the uh, capillary membrane of the al uh, al alveolar capillary membrane becomes damaged and uh, more permeable to intravascular fluid resulting in severe dyspnea because of, because if there is you know insufficiency or failure of the capillary mem membrane or it if it becomes damaged then what will happen it will become more permeable to the intravascular fluid which will result in severe dyspnea hypoxemia and diffusion of uh, diffuse pulmonary infiltrate means they will they will not be able to infiltrate all right so first of all uh, this one is the stages of uh, edema <coughs> formation in acute respiratory distress this one is the normal alveolus here are the capillaries you know here are the proteins so what will happen in this increased pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure so if uh, the in between the capillary and in between the proteins the if uh, the uh, this fluid the hydro uh, the increased the capillary membrane uh, in between the cap uh, in between the capillary and in, uh, in between the uh, this one uh, alveolus what will happen the hydrostatic pressure increases due to which uh, there will be an uh, increase in uh, lymphatic flow due to which the fluid exudate transfers in, into the alveoli here it transfers into because uh, the hydrostatic pressure is there and there will be an increased lymphatic lymphatic flow lymphatic flow so the this <coughs> the fluid will actually transferred into the alveoli what will be the etiology so, two types of etiology like uh, one is from the pulmonary infection and second one is non pulmonary all right so in pulmonary infection what can be the etiological factor that is lung infection Al uh, already you know that that lung infection can lead to ARDS second one is uh, aspiration third one is pulmonary contusion uh, drowning lung injury high concentration of the oxygen smoking or inhalation of the gases and in non pulmonary uh, it uh, it uh, this uh, shock will lead to ARDS burn will lead to ARDS major surgery is that is CABG and embolism it can lead to ARDS as well after the post treatment yeah, for uh, uh, this bone marrow transplantation and uh, transfusion of the blood product all right now what will happen the you know pathophysiology of ARDS will give will take a simple uh, pathophysiology like if there is any kind of lung, lung injury if it is pulmonary or not pulmonary what will happen there will be release of vasoactive substances like serotonin histamine and, or, or uh, bradykinin all right so due to which there will be an increased alveolar capillary membrane permeability and there will be you know fluid will migrate inside the alveoli due to which the pulmonary edema occurs and impaired gaseous exchange occur due to this because co2 and oxygen will not uh, you know 
uh, exchange with each other due to which ARDS happen. Second one is due to these uh, you know release of the vasoactive substance that is serotonin, histamine and bradykinin, there will be a narrow, narrowing of the vessels. All right, due to which the vascular obstruction will be there and pulmonary hypertension, uh, pulmonary hypertension occur due to which ARDS can happen. All right, then uh, this one is not yeah uh, clinical manifestation. Like uh, what what are all the patient will feel when they are having this disease? So in early signs and symptoms, restlessness will be there, dyspnea will be there, low blood pressure, confusion, extreme tiredness. Change in patient behavior or mood swing will be there, or patient will will be very agitated, or you know either either uh, patient will be you know disoriented, either patient will have change in the uh, loss of consciousness. If uh, pneumonia is causing ARDS, then client may have cough or fever. All right, if the patient is having pneumonia <coughs> or uh, pneumonia is causing the ARDS. Latent signs and symptoms. The, these are severe uh, difficulty in breathing that is labored rapid breathing shortness of breath tachycardia cyanosis or blue skin will be there lips and nails you can see the cyanosis in skin lips and nails <coughs> uh, thick for the sputum metabolic acidosis abnormal bre uh, breath sounds like crackles you feel uh, here with no normal ears or with the stethoscope you will come to know that uh, there will be a crackling sound in the you know when the patient respirates then uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be decreased that is the respiratory uh, alkalosis and uh, decrease in partial pressure of oxygen as well what we are going to do the test or how we are going to examine it so history of above symptoms you have to take the history the present medical history past medical history second uh, on physical examination we uh, on physical examination what uh, physical examination what we are going to do we have to do the auscultation which reveals there will be an abnormal breath sound uh, abg we have to do the abg means when the patient comes to you in the hospital and uh, you know need an immediate care so first line of treatment we are going to start with the abg analysis second one the blood uh, blood test chest x-ray or bronchoscopy sputum cultures and analysis we have to do we can shift the patient to the chest x-ray or chest CT or uh, you know echo then then comes this one is the you know uh, image for the patient with the ARDS you can see that there will be a lot of you know uh, cloudiness will be there all right you can see this one these are all the cloudiness this one this side as well this side as well all right those this is a patient with the ARDS now the complication <clears throat> in the complication, the common complications are nosocomial pneumonia, which can easily occur from the hospital as well, hospital acquired infection, or uh, barotrauma or renal failure. You know, these are the common complications. Other complications like oxygen toxicity, like if the patient is in ARDS and uh, uh, if uh, there is a lot of oxygen, pH is high, then we give uh, lots and lots of oxygen that will cause uh, oxygen toxicity. Now, stress ulcers are the main problem uh, also the tracheal ulceration will be there if the patient is uh, like uh, you know uh, on suctioning or blood clots leading to deep vein thrombosis as well and pulmonary uh, pulmonary embolism can occur as well <coughs> what will be the medical management the patient with the ARDS are hospitalized and require treatment in ICUs you know that and uh, there is no specific therapy for ARDS just supportive measure we have to give like we have to uh, you know overcome their symptoms and uh, for that we have to do give the to increase the oxygen we have to give the oxygen supplementation uh, mechanical respirate, uh, respirator or ventilator we have to give now uh, positioning strategies on the patient from the supine to prone then uh, uh, you know lateral rotation therapy we have to give for the patient fruit therapy we have to give to the patient <coughs> so the patient lying prone on volman prone position this is the volman prone position how we are giving, going to give uh, to the patient with ARDS now prone position we can give prone position that is distribution of the redistribution of the blood and ventilation lead to the affected area of the side that is for the secretion clearance like if it is uh, safe uh, stay for the one side of uh, one side for a uh, long period of time then definitely your the sputum doesn't move from one place to another but if positioning is being done or uh, then what will happen the secretion clearance will be there and shift mediastinum anteriorly 
assist in the recruitment of atelectasis area. All right, reduce lung compression by the abdominal contents. This is the lateral rotation therapy bed. This is a bed where we can where we can give uh, the position to the patient. All right, so that the secretion should move. Then uh, uh, this one is the tidal volume we have to set in the ventilator. That recommended is for uh, four to six milliliter per kg. That is, you know, uh, in the tidal volume we have to set. That is, and uh, this doesn't uh, concern you, but during the time uh, when you will operating a ventilator, you have to see whether we are starting or recommended guidelines for the ADS patient is four to six ml per kg. All right, then, uh, <coughs> yeah, PEP. That is, PEP, PEP is a uh, post and expiratory pressure. That will the uh, recommendation lowest PEP FiO2 to maintain the saturation so that the saturation is maintained. Uh, it recruits a collapsed alveoli in depending regions over distant or non-depending regions, right? Uh, then steroids we have to give in the patient. Uh, in 2006, the study used that the use of steroid uh, after 14 or till 14 days or above, that is post onset, will increase the mortality, decrease in the vas uh, vaso pressure, and increase in ventilator and shock free days. Neuromuscular weakness will be increased. Uh, short term improvement in the oxygen will be there. Now the medical management, you know that the patient is having infections, we go for the antibiotics, the patient is having the <coughs> inflammatory changes in uh, inflammatory uh, inflammation in his, uh, you know, uh, because infection will lead to the inflammation, so we have to give the anti-inflammatory such as corticosteroids, then diuretics comes, the, you know, then uh, comes the anti-anxiety or muscle relaxers or bronchodilators we have to give. Now the nursing diagnosis. Ineffective breathing pattern related to decreased lung compliance, decreased energy as uh, characterized by dyspnea, abnormal ABG uh, sinuses, and use of accessory muscles. Means uh, there will be an effective, like the page, this is the diagnosis, but we have to give the implementation for that. Impaired gas action related to diffusion defect as characterized by restlessness. All right, and uh, sinuses. Risk of decreased cardiac output related to positive pressure ventilation. All right, these all are the diagnosis. I had just clicked the photo for understanding ARDS with the treatment. All right, and uh, with the uh, like positioning or uh, you know ventilator mode setting. All right, so uh, what we are going to do? I'm just going to conclude it. Like we had today started with the uh, you know uh, the definition, the etiology, the types of uh, clinical manifestations. All right. Then uh, what, what we have studied, we have studied the, how we are going to diagnose it and if we had diagnosed then first of line treatment what will be there and uh, what all are the ventilator setting we have to see, the PEEP we had seen, then we had seen the FiO2 as well, then uh, tidal volume how we are going to set and uh, we had seen the nursing diagnosis. Now the assignment for uh, you is that these are the seven uh, nursing diagnoses you have to write the priority wide priority wise nursing interventions for the patient with the, uh, uh, the, the patient with the ARDS all right you have to write at least five uh, nursing implementations for each nursing diagnosis all right and if you have any questions kindly contact me thank you and have a nice day all right